Hello, welcome. I've been putting off making this video about the Japanese language until I absolutely knew all the facts, but then I realised for the sake of a small, fun video, I'm not going to delve too deep into it and really just scrape the surface. Pronunciation first of all. Japanese pronunciation is very easy, really, for Westerners to pronounce. Um, although there's one sound I have trouble with, and it's this character. This is called Tsu, and I'm not really pronouncing it properly, but it's Tsu, and you kind of have to pronounce it as if you're just ending a word and starting a new word, like something T, and then starting a word with S-U, Tsu, but I'm not really pronouncing it properly. Anyway, generally, Japanese pronunciation is easy, although they don't have the V sound, and they don't have the TH th sound. And this can be quite amusing because um, words with th in them, like earth, become us, um, which is uh, worryingly similar to us. Um, in fact, the official Japanese word for earth really is us. That's how it's pronounced. These two symbols here make up that word us. This symbol is a, this symbol is su. But usually Japanese don't pronounce the u part of su so much, so it sounds like us, um, which is nice. Um, BBC released a movie recently called Us, and um, I do believe there's an Us Awareness Day every year. And there's a restaurant um, in a town called uh, Sanjin Jaya in Tokyo, which is called From the Earth. It's an organic kind of natural foods restaurant. There we go, from the us. There are three alphabets in the Japanese language. This symbol is the letter A in the most common alphabet used, called hiragana. So written in English should be the letter A, but pronounced R. This is the letter E, pronounced E. The letter I, pronounced E. The letter O, pronounced O. And the letter U, pronounced U. And basically, Japanese is just made up of variants of these sounds using different consonants at the start. For example, ka, ke, ki, ko, ku, and ma, me, mi, mo, mu. Japanese uses two other alphabets. That first one was hiragana. The next one we'll look at is called katakana. This is used to pretty much exclusively describe foreign words, usually English, but not always, which can be quite confusing. So if it was written down in English, this would be an A, pronounced A, E, I, O, U. Ka, Ke, Ki, Ko, Ku. One of the best ways to practice katakana is to look at menus because many of them are written entirely in katakana because they're trying to pronounce foreign words. For example, at the bottom of this list we can see it says beef shichu, which surprisingly means beef stew. Beef shichu. If you say it quicker, it sounds like beef stew. Beef stew. Um, this is really the basis of katakana and which is why Japanese pronunciation is generally so bad. Uh, let's have a look at something else, something more easy. Let's look at the top one here. Um, in the black box it says side or order. Side or order. Side order. Let's look at kanji. This is the third alphabet used in Japanese and it's derived entirely from Chinese as is really the whole language. Here are some regular kanji symbols which we saw at the start of the video. Um, let's have a look at the most complicated kanji there is, and I think it's this one. This means biang, and sadly it's not commonly used in Japan. It's used in a noodle shop. It's a type of noodle you can see in this sign in China, and it looks a bit like this. So with three different systems, the Japanese language really is one of, if not the hardest in the world, especially to read and write. Um, in fact, many people here don't recognize their own kanji because there are thousands of kanji. Simplified, Japanese language uses two alphabets, hiragana, katakana, each one contains about 50 characters. Plus they use the whole Chinese sets of characters, which can be about four or 5,000 characters. 
So just like the way we can't spell words properly, sometimes Japanese people don't know all the kanji. Let's take a walk around my local area now and see examples of the language. Now here is a sign advertising a clinic. We can see five katakana symbols. It says ku ni ni ku. Ku ni ni ku. Pronounce it quickly and it sounds a bit like what it is in English with a heavy Japanese accent. Uh, the first two letters here are kanji for kitazawa and the next five symbols are katakana. Town horu. Town horu. This is an example of how English is used badly in Japan. It says close instead of closed. This is an example of how English is used everywhere, purely aesthetically, just for looking cool, not really to help foreigners. For example, this menu, you can see the titles are in English, but none of the menu items are in English, um, which is kind of difficult for foreigners when they first arrive, because we think, hey, everything's in English, but it's not. If you want to get your hair cut, you have the choice of cut, colour or perm here, because the next four items are in gibberish Japanese. Um, here, there's another menu, tea time at Eddie Cafe, weekday 4 to weekend 3, whatever. Uh, today's sweets menu, great, but the rest is in Japanese. This is katakana, it says souffle cheese cake blueberry kanji. Souffle cheesecake blueberry, hmm. Hair and make, this means hair and makeup, it's hair salon. They don't say makeup, they say make. And let's have a look at this theatre. This is katakana, to pronounce the word in English theatre, shiata, because there's no th sound in Japanese, remember? And let's have a look at this government information. Um, it's all in Japanese, as you can see, and there's these one, two, three, four, five, six words in English offered as a kind of half assed translation. Now, this is called first kitchen. If these words were pronounced in katakana, it would be first or kitchen. Japanese people like to use the first few katakana of each English word, which in this case would be fuakin, as a kind of abbreviation. Let's go to fuakin. Okay.